Warning. Maximum depth reached. Hull damage imminent. I know, I know, I know, I know. Come on, faster. Faster. Yes. We freaking did it. Hello, internet. This is Simon. Welcome to Subnautica. Um, built a couple of things now, as you can see. Just woke up from my bed, put a couple of decorations, uh, built a modification station, built a window, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with, I mean, obviously it's very bare still, but uh, you know, slowly we're going to add some stuff. Um, I have a couple more posters from the the Aurora, we can decorate a bit more, put a cap there. I couldn't put the, the toy on the shelves, so the shelves might be replaced by something else, but you know, for now, that's that, and we can sleep now, so that's good. With the modification station, we can start modding our stuff. So, survival knife can become a thermal blade. Oh, actually, it cooks cooks them right away oh that's cool so we don't need to come back and cook okay okay I get that that's cool so we had a choice between those two the lightweight tank or the higher capacity we're gonna go for more capacity because that always seems to be what I'm missing and the last thing we can upgrade are the fins and we can make uh, fins that are basically faster so we're gonna do that as well and we can't do this because we don't have magnetite and we can't do cyclops upgrades because we don't have a cyclops but that's it and now oh actually you can see it here at 225 oxygen i don't remember what it was before but and we can swim faster so that's good we're going to equip this instead of the habitat builder because we don't need it and we're gonna go um, to back to the purple caves because now we can probably go all the way to the, to the habitat. We're also gonna go to try to go to the that shipwreck that we can go all the way to. So we're we're kind of tying up some loose ends. Um, cave, yeah. So we're going to the cave this way. And yeah, I think I think I think it should be fine now. I mean, I haven't tested how how fast I'm going with the the new fins, but it should be faster. I'm hearing some weird sounds. I don't know what that was. There's always some weird sounds. So yeah, now, now we should be able to go farther into the cave. We might need to come in through another uh, entry point than this one to get to uh, the, the... As you can see, the there should be another waypoint, yeah, for the habitat. Because it's a little too deep for my... Um, for my Seamoth, but... Anyways. Down we go! Ouch! Ah yeah. Actually, the the Seamoth didn't suffer any damage from that. So, yeah, we have to hug the the top. I know what that sound is. Because we don't want to go below two hundred. Might work. I don't know if the the snakes can attack. Uh, Okay, let's see if there's, oh I guess the f uh, the fins maybe don't affect the speed at which I move with uh, the sea glide. Okay, so there's room here so I could dip lower and then come back higher with the sea moth probably. 
so we'll try this. I just don't want my Seamoth to explode because then we're a long way from home. Alright, let's do it quickly. I know. I know. We're going back up. Don't worry. Are we? Is this high enough? Oh, that might not be high enough. Ah, shoot. Come on. Let's find somewhere. Oh, good. Actually, awesome. Okay, we need to repair. Where's my repair tool? Repair tool is gonna go instead of the... Let's go with the thermal blade. Oh, this is gonna be complicated. Okay. Although from here, I think... How far are we? 270 meters. Huh. Might be tough. Even with our new oxygen tank. Can we go back to... Above 200? Yeah, we can. Here. Yeah, yeah, we can do it. We can bring the Seamoth even closer. Oh boy, let's hope it doesn't explode. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was funny. Warning, maximum depth reached. Hull damage imminent. I know, I know, I know, I know. Come on, faster. Faster. Yes. We freaking did it. I don't know why we're gonna leave this place. But we did it. Come on. Alright. Let's see what's up with that. Oh, is that an exit? I think so. Okay, so we just didn't find the right entry point. Stasis rifle. I don't know if... I don't remember if we have stasis rifle. We do. Okay. Oh. We already have this. Where is the... How do I get in? I want to get in. Stasis rifle we have. Ah, here it is. Hearing weird sounds again. Thermal plant I think we have, maybe? Nope. One out of the two. Okay. Son, there is always a pecking order. And in our world, money makes a hierarchy. I pay Maida a fraction of what I pay you, and you a fraction of what I pay me. If money makes the hierarchy, why is Marguerite making the decisions? We need her. We let her think what she likes, so long as she does what she's told. What if she doesn't? For enough money, she will. People always do. I think... Yep. We found our exit. Okay, good. Um, let's drop down as close as we can. Ooh, we can see the, the, the snake thing inside the... It's, uh, I don't know. Is it a mushroom? I'll call it a mushroom. Yeah. Okay. So, let's go here. I saw something we could scan. Seeing shiny things as well. Signal location uploaded to PDA. You know what Mader told me today? 
She wants to build a habitat 500 meters below sea level, more than a kilometer northeast of here. And she needs Bart and I to do it. She's got it into her head that she can save us if she just acts recklessly enough. But I've hauled Star Wars to Neptune, Plasteel to the Federation. <sighs> this family operates nine different mining colonies across the Ariadne Arm. Maida thinks she's better suited to lead. Her contract still says otherwise. But I just cannot damn well tell whether it's the stupidest idea I ever heard. Or my only hope. I turned 80 years old last week. I thought I had another 80 in me, but marooned on this planet, there's no swapping out of my liver when the old one fails. Here, I'm mortal. And Maida is useful. So... It's my responsibility to make a decision. Return to the island and hope whatever not the Degazi out of the sky won't do the same to the rescue ship. Or take us deeper in search of answers. And all the while be hoping old age Jeez, gets me so long. the sea monsters do. Stop talking. I'll give Maida just one thing. She was right about these caves. There's enough lithium there to fabricate a hundred tons of plasteel. Enough for a damn fleet of Cyclops submarines. There was nothing anyone could have done to avoid crashing here. But I was right to order the detour. If we get off this planet, they'll be talking Ooh. about the Torgel share price on the other side of the Federation. <laughs> Gosh. Integration new PDA data. So long. Thank you. Blueprint yeah, we got another signal for another location. I thought it might get claustrophobic living underwater. Father feels it is. He'd tell me it was childish, but I stare out of the window and sometimes I think how lucky I am to see this world up close. Back on the island, I wouldn't have believed the creatures that live down here. The fish, they glow. There's one that's 90% eyeball. Snakes twice the length of a habitat compartment. Certainly, it's not all friendly. Most of the plant life is toxic. I learned <laughs> that the hard way. <laughs> but I've managed to coax some marble melons into growing indoors. And when they don't cover our dietary needs, well, we eat the fish themselves. It's a bit gross, but there's <laughs> nothing they wouldn't do. I've been attempting to document my findings. Father approves. He says, understanding is power. That the more we know about this planet, the more we can use it to our advantage. I'm just doing it because it's fun. It's not easy without proper equipment and network access, but the old-fashioned way, observing, taking notes, testing theories, shows me the world in a way a spectroscopic analysis never could. Hmm. Lately, I've been watching the crab snakes. They ambush their prey as it tries to feed on the mushrooms they hide in. What they don't eat settles on the seabed which fertilizes the mushrooms, which feeds the herbivores, and so the chain continues. Co-evolution oh. gives me the fuzzies. Co-evolution. We're already 200 meters below sea level. Oh, ouch. You want to go deeper? Look around us, Chief. Water leaking through the hull, water outside the hatch. We're drowning real slow. If rescue arrives, whatever shot us down, it's going to do it again and again until it's shut off. You see an off switch around here, Chief? Why would it any more likely be half a kilometer down? Your kid found something on the scanner. There's something down there. Something that shouldn't be. <laughs> You're mad. I'm going all the same. And I have an idea you two are going to follow. But if you do, be mindful. Your authority stopped at sea level. Okay. More stories. Something incredible just happened. Since we're down here, I had this plan to build equipment and study the life forms we were encountering, but I didn't have enough enameled glass. So I started looking for a natural substrate that would strengthen the glass we have. And those stalker teeth we've been finding fit the bill. Only, well, we needed more. That's when Marguerite got interested. She actually listened to me. More than I can say for father. And I worked up the courage to talk about my more tentative theories. When I told her they were attracted to metal deposits, that their teeth get dislodged when they pick them up, 
Her eyes narrowed and she dashed out of the room. Three hours later, she came back, her pack loaded down with stalker teeth. I asked her about it. She shrugged and said my theories were good. Said she had the meeting out of the palm of her hand. I think she meant it literally. She is incredible. She went out to the kelp forest, armed with just a heat blade, and went fin to fin with a pack of stalkers. On the one hand, that is the coolest thing I have ever heard. On the other, well, I hope the stalkers didn't come off worse than Marguerite did. She had a huge gash on her forearm. I don't think things went as smoothly as she made out. And what's the point in surviving here, if we have to kill everything that makes it so wonderful? I wish I knew more about these animals. But father won't let me leave the habitat. But maybe with all this glass, we could build a containment union and get up close to them. Okay, cool. So we learned a bunch of things. I mean, so there's another habitat that is even deeper that we're gonna have a hard time uh, getting to since uh, we can't go below 200 technically. What's kind of cool is the um, I think Paul is his name. It's kind of inferring that they're immortal. They're just at that point with technology where they can just replace body parts um, at Eternum. So, and but but they're not um, immortal on this planet, right? Because on this planet they don't have the the means to to replace their their organs. So that was kind of cool. We learned that. Um, there's a bunch of lithium down there, and we learned that crab snakes are evil. And we learned that, um, what else did they say? Oh yeah, that, um, how to make enamel glass, but that, you know, we kind of knew already. Um, so, you know, that's, but it's so, like, it's, the, the, the story exposition, when it's Paul Torgal, it's so long. It talks for so damn long. Um, anyways. But it was interesting. We did find a, uh, a couple of things, like a blueprint also. A blueprint for... Yeah, water filtration, but I don't know how to make air gel. So, that's kind of, I guess that's the next thing. I don't think we found anything else. That was new. But we're gonna go back to where now the shipwreck was. <laughs> Speaking of stalkers. Um, yeah, where the shipwreck was, trying to go uh, even deeper in the shipwreck. Now that we have the, the higher capacity tank and the... Again, I'm not sure the fins make us faster since we're using the... What's that called? The, the sea glide anyways to go faster. I mean, you can't hurt her, but... Oh, no. So, it should be here. Whoa. What the hell? Okay. Yeah. We're back to this... Incredibly disorienting... Ship. So. Going through... Then there's another door, then the staircase, then go under the staircase, through the hole. Can't see it. Can't see the damn hole. Ah oh, man, come on. Okay. Actually, let's use the flashlight. I'm so dumb. Okay, now it's through here through here in that room oh we already have the prawn suit so yeah we, we've explored this room but we haven't been I think in this or we have mobile vehicle bay I think we have been in this room uh, oops. Picture frame. We don't have picture frame, that's for sure. Modification station. 
propulsion cannon. So we have been in this room, I think. We just, I didn't see the picture frame last time. But there was another room we could access from here. There was like another door. Yeah. And like another... Oh, is it, the, is it the end? Is it the end of it? I think it might be. Yeah, we did the data download already. Okay, so that was the thing that I was seeing. That's another prawn suit thing, I think. Battery charger. Okay. So, alright, I think I'm done with this then. Cool! So we managed to get all the way through. Now to get out without dying. This way, this way, up the stairs. I know I sound ridiculous, but I just... <laughs> this looks, this is harder than it looks. I was talking to it about it with one of my friends. It's like, it's weird because you you keep losing where up and down is in this big thing. Okay, here we go. Great. Okay, good. I'm gonna head back home. Um, we're gonna finish the episode here. I uh, thank you guys for watching, and um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.